Welcome to Python Intermediate and in this lesson we're going to be focusing on bubble sort and insertion sort. Now we already know that searching and sorting are two common operations performed using a computer and the two types of sort that you need to focus on are bubble sort and insertion sort. Of course there are a lot of different types of sorts out there, quick sort, merge sort and beyond, but we only need to focus on these two. You both need to understand the algorithm and how these sorts can sort a set of data and you also need to know how to code these. Now this is the last lesson which will be relevant to IGCSE level students because you will be asked to write or code this in your paper 2 exam. Of course this is also relevant to A level students because you are also asked to code this in paper 4 and write about this in paper 3 especially in pseudocode. So coding this will enhance your understanding of the algorithm as well. Now, sorting algorithms can reduce the complexity of a problem and these often have direct applications in searching algorithms, database algorithms and data structures. Now different types of algorithms can be compared based on time complexity, whether they are stable or how many number of comparisons that happen, how many number of swaps that are required and so forth. All of that can be covered as part of big O notation. However, we're not going to be focusing on that. We're just going to be focusing on the coding of these algorithms in this lesson. Okay, let's begin. So what exactly is bubble sort? Bubble sort is an algorithm that arranges an array or a data set in either ascending or descending order. Now to conduct a binary search, you need to sort a list or an array out in ascending or descending order in the first place. And both bubble and insertion sort are useful to do that. Now consider you have an unsorted array, which we might want to sort out in ascending order. So we've got this array called numbers and it has only two values for now, five and two. You will need to compare the value at the first index position with the next one. And if it is greater, then you will need to swap it or vice versa. This requires the use of a temporary variable to store one of the values. So what you could do is either take two out and store it in this temp variable, compare it and then do a swap or you take five out and store it in a temporary variable, compare it with the next one, and then do a swap. So how does this swapping of variables look like? We have numbers, which is equal to five and two, so that's our array. We're going to have a temp variable, where we're going to store the numbers array value in the first position, which is index zero. So we're gonna take the five and store it there. Then in numbers zero, we're going to move numbers one. So two comes into index zero in the array, and numbers one, which is the position where two is right now, we store the value which is stored in temp. So five is moved into the second position. So we're overwriting things here. Now all of this is required after a comparison. That is basically the essence of swapping algorithms. You need to have a temporary space where you can move a value and then after a comparison, you rewrite things. So pause this here and study how this is working. And then we're going to look at the importance of loops in this particular process because often you don't just get two values, you get hundreds or thousands or millions of values. So how are loops used? Well, there are two loops in a bubble sort algorithm. One is the inner loop, which means that one value is at the correct position and it's responsible for swapping of each element. So if you look at this particular array, after one correct positioning of an element, there will be an other outer loop, which will basically determine the number of elements in an array. So for the first loop, if you're looking at it, the outer loop will need to run for the length of your array. So you're simply saying that keep doing this till you reach the end of the array in essence. And the second inner loop will just swap the value. And this repeats the whole process till the end of the list. Now there are different ways where you could code these loops and one is an easy way to do it, that's called the inefficient way of working, which uses basically two for loops and performs extra unwanted loops until it reaches the end of the list, because it'll just keep on checking, keep on checking. Even if the list might be sorted out, it'll just keep checking till the end of the array. The other one is a bit more efficient, where the outer loop is a conditional loop, a while loop with a flag, and the inner loop is a for loop. Now, in an exam, you could probably do both unless they give you the pseudocode for it to code. So it's your preference. We're going to be looking at both of these so you can do a comparison yourself. Two for loops, which is probably the easiest way to remember it. Outer loop is a for loop. Inner loop is a for loop. 
The other one is a conditional while loop at the top, we're using a flag and a for loop in the middle. I'm gonna ask you to have a go at this first and then you can check the solution. So practice question one, you've got array data with a set of values, make sure the values are the same. Write a function called bubble sort to sort the array data in ascending order using both inefficient and efficient ways. I put the array data after the function is run. So pause the video, have a go and then continue. Okay, there are two sets of code on screen. The left one is the inefficient one and the right one is the efficient bit of code. So we've got array data and you've defined a bubble sort function where you've got two loops. The first for loop is running for the entire length of the array data. You can type it in manually or you can use length of array data as well, that's up to you. The second loop is going to be running for one less than the length of the array data. So if the array data has 10 values, the second loop is going to run one less. Why one less? Because you're doing a comparison. So when you compare the first one with the second one, you don't want to end up in a situation where you end up comparing the last one with the value next to it because there's not going to be a value next to it. So 10th can't be compared to 11th because there is no 11th value. So you're gonna end up with an error. So in the second loop, you've got to use length of array data minus one or 10 minus one, which is nine. Now make sure you remember that, otherwise you're gonna end up with an error. And then you're going to compare the data. If array data index value of y is greater than index value y plus one, you're doing your comparison and then you do your swap where you have the temporary variable and then you swap the positions. But that, that's pretty straightforward. If you don't understand that, pause the video and have a clear look to it. The efficient code works exactly the same way. We have our array data, we have our function, but we're going to use a flag here, which I've called no swaps, and a boundary, which is nine. Again, the same thing. We don't want to have the tenth. The boundary has to be one less than the length of the array. While no swaps is equal to false, which is going to be true at the beginning, we set no swaps is equal to true because we haven't done any swaps yet. So we're going to do our loop now for y in range zero to boundary. So you can already see we don't necessarily need to run this for the entire length of the array because we're not using a for loop at the beginning, but we are only going to run it one less than the length. And that's the, basically the boundary. You could have used the boundary as length of array data minus one, which would be more efficient. And now again, that next part is our comparison. If array data in position one is greater than array data in position two, we compare those and then we do our swaps. And at the end, we change no swaps back to false because we've just done a swap. So we want the flag back that, okay, swaps happened. So no swaps, well, that's false. Outside the for loop, we increment the boundary because the first bit is sorted. Now the boundary will change to eight and then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, and so on. So what's gonna happen is one, this for loop is gonna continue. The boundary is going to be reduced. So it's gonna keep doing this until it reaches the end of the array. And the rest is pretty straightforward. You call the bubble sort algorithm and then you print the array data to see the output. So if you haven't understood this, my suggestion is to code this and see how both work. Do you get the same answer? Which one do you feel comfortable with? And then that is the algorithm that you might want to begin with. So pause the video if you couldn't do this on your own and type the code in and test it out. Okay, let's look at insertion sort. Now insertion sort is an algorithm to arrange an array in either ascending or descending order, just like bubble sort. They basically do the same thing. The main difference between bubble sort and insertion sort is that bubble sort performs sorting by checking the neighboring data elements and then swapping them if they're in the wrong order. Whereas insertion sort performs sorting by transferring one element to a partially sorted array at a time. So what does it actually look like? Well, in insertion sort, consider each element as a card, okay? We use two loops, again, an outer loop, which is for loop, and a while loop, which is now an inner loop. So we're swapping the loops around. Uh, if you're looking at the efficient way of coding, a bubble sort. So bubble sort had a while loop on the outside and a for loop on the inside. Here, we're going to swap those around. The first element is considered to be sorted automatically. And then the second element is moved towards the correct position. So if you look at our numbers array, nine is considered to be sorted and three is then moved. Well, if it's less than 
9, then it'll move before it. If it's greater than 9, it'll just be left where it is. Now the array length is 5. We'll copy the first value into a temp variable, and another variable called position will store its position. For example, temp is equal to 3, and its position is 1. Now we can loop to check if the position is greater than 0, and if the data in the first position is greater than the temp. If it is, then we can simply put the data in the first position into the second position and update the position to position minus one, as we can then put the temp value into the first index of the array. Now again, some of you might not be able to get this. The best way to do this is to actually physically create these variables and these positions and move values. One way that I deal with this when I'm teaching it is we use cards and then we have placeholders for temp, placeholders for positions, and we manually change the values to make sure that we understand how the sort is working. So here we're just going to look at it in the form of code. As we know, there will be two loops, one outer loop and one inner loop. The outer loop will be a for loop, which will check each element, and the inner loop will be a conditional while loop, which will find the correct position of the element. So we've got our numbers. The array size is going to be the length of numbers. I'm going to then write a for loop, which is going to begin from position one, not position zero, and I'll talk about that in a moment, to the length of the array, which is the array size. Now, why not start at zero? Because we consider the first element to be sorted, okay? So we're going to use that for comparative purposes. Now, temp is going to be numbers index, or so whatever value is at index position one, so three goes into temp. Position is going to be index, so position is one. While position is greater than zero, well, it is, one is greater than zero. And numbers, position minus one, which means nine, is greater than three, okay? So compare it to the previous position. Numbers position becomes numbers position minus one, so we do our swap, we reduce the position by minus one, so it becomes zero. Then outside the while loop, we simply put the temp value in the first place. So we're taking three and we're putting that in place of nine. And then the outside loop begins again, go to the second and we do the same thing and third and fourth and so on. And this continues for the rest of the array length. Now nothing beats your understanding than actual coding. So have a go at practice question two. Array data has a set of values. Create a function called insertion sort. Use the following variables. Array size, which is the length of the array. Pointer, which is the index of the for loop. Value to insert whatever you're going to insert, insert position once again, temporary variable to store the array index. Output the array data after the insertion sort is run. Pause the video, have a go, and then check a possible solution. Hopefully you've got something like this, you've got your array data, which is assigned some values, you've got an insertion sort function, array size is the length of array data, the pointer is in the range starting from position one to the length of the array, Value to insert is the data at that particular pointer value. Insert position is the actual pointer. And then we're going to use a while loop to do our comparison and our swapping. At the end of the function, outside in the main program, you're going to call insertion sort, and then you're going to print the array data to see if it was sorted. Hopefully you got the sort working. If you haven't, and if you haven't understood it, code this, test it, and see if it works. Make sure you understand both how bubble sort and insertion sort work because these are essential algorithms and quite commonly asked in exams. And with that, we're at the end of the lesson. Hopefully you understand the need for sorting and how it makes data sets efficient and makes searching quicker. You understand how bubble sort works. You understand how insertion sort works. You understand the differences between both of them. One just compares it to the next item in the list. The other one removes it completely and then works out where it lies in a partially sorted array. And finally, you're able to code both bubble and insertion sort using Python. If you have any questions, as usual, write them down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.